Today we're going to talk about the biggest mistakes that women make after a breakup. And if you stick around to the end, I'm going to show you seven of these mistakes and what you can do to overcome them. But if you're still unsure about how you should be proceeding with your particular situation, my best recommendation is to take my X Recovery Chances quiz. All you gotta do to take the quiz is simply hop over to my website, www.exboyfriendrecovery.com. The quiz is a simple two minute quiz designed to tell you what kind of chance you have of getting your ex back. So again, all you gotta do is simply look in the description link below, click on that link and we'll hook you up. All right, let's talk about some of the biggest mistakes that I'm seeing my clients make. Mistake number one, breaking the no contact rule. Without a doubt, the no contact rule is one of the most difficult tactics to employ after a breakup. Simply put, the no contact rule is a period of time where you are ignoring your ex on purpose with the intent of making them miss you and also giving you some time to cultivate your own personal life. But here's the rub. Over 80% of the people who actually try to implement a no contact rule end up breaking it early. But why? Let's say that you're using a 30 day no contact rule and somewhere around day 12 or 13, your ex texts you, hey, what's up? Now you have not talked to your ex for 14 days, almost two weeks. The temptation to just respond to them, see what's going on with them is so high you can't bear not to take it. And this is the exact situation so many women find themselves in when they're actually implementing a no contact rule. But here's the thing that they don't realize. Every time that you have to restart your no contact rule or do it over again, it becomes less effective than the time before. So if you've done the no contact rule a total of three times because you failed it at least two times, the first two times will be, have been more effective or it will have more of an impact on your ex than that third time. So rather than trying to sit here and think, oh, it's okay if I break the no contact rule, try not to. Mistake number two, going too fast too soon. One of the biggest mistakes that I see in making after their breakup is getting too excited and going too fast too soon. Now, what does this look like? Well, put simply, it's when you use a strategy like the no contact rule where you're ignoring your ex for usually a minimum of 30 days, and then all of a sudden you're asking them for a date. It just feels off. You've just gotten done ignoring your ex-boyfriend for 30 days straight. Why would they say yes to a date? Rather than slowly rebuilding the connection, you're trying to force things and it's not going to work out. Mistake number three, living together with your ex after a breakup. You'll find that this is one of the least talked about aspects of a breakup. A lot of people who end up breaking up are also living together and figuring out how to navigate that situation can be difficult for many couples. What we found through our own independent research is that actually living with your ex is a negative towards getting them back. Usually the people who are separated from their ex living in different spaces can employ a no contact rule so much easier than someone who's constantly living with their ex where they're seeing them constantly. My recommendation to you is that if you are living with your ex, try to find a way to where you can not live together with them. Now, this is not always possible for every single situation, but if it is possible, it is our recommendation to move out and you'll find that your chances are slightly better. Mistake number four, waiting for your ex to text you first. Now, most men who I work with do not have a problem with this because the dynamic is completely different. Men are expected to reach out first, for pretty much the entire relationship. They are the initiators, where as women, you're not really the initiator at all. You don't really have that power. It's socially acceptable for you to be the one to receive the initiation of a text message. But I found that when it comes to breakups, there's a small difference. You play by different rules. Most women who get too caught up in the fact that their ex needs to text them first are doing so out of pride. But Here's what I want you to take from this video. If you learn nothing else, learn this one singular fact. What matters most isn't who starts a conversation, but who ends a conversation. 
So one thing that we recommend a ton here throughout our YouTube channel and throughout all of our websites is a no contact rule after a breakup. But this puts you in a very precarious position because guess what? You're sitting there waiting for your ex to reach out to you first. But I actually like to put the power in the woman's hands. Rather than being very prideful and waiting for your ex to reach out to you first, why not reach out to them first and work on ending the conversation first? We have found that that is entirely more powerful than simply just waiting around and having nothing happen. Mistake number five, being a gnat. Being a gnat is actually an acronym. It is not the annoying bugs that you see that are constantly swarming around your head and will not leave you alone. But what it is, is actually trying to do some of that same behavior, but to your ex. Being a gnat stands for G going N nuts A at T texting. We've all met that one person that just doesn't get the hints. They don't really understand when you're not interested and they keep pushing and pushing and pushing for responses. Their conversations are quite boring and oftentimes when you actually do communicate with that one person, you're just doing so out of some sense of feeling sorry for them. Well, I have found that most women who are acting really natty or kind of annoying and nonstop blowing their ex's phone up and annoying them through conversations and constantly making everything about them and just going nuts at texting in general, kind of have this natty sort of feeling from their exes. They want nothing to do with you. So my recommendation to you is try to avoid being a gnat with your ex boyfriend. Mistake number six, there is no curiosity hooks throughout conversations. One of the things that I've been most proud of is my work with my private Facebook support group. It's basically a collection of men and women who are going through breakups trying to win their exes back. We support each other and we give each other ideas on conversations, text messages, dates, jealousy pictures, you name it, it is there in that community. And one thing that they have done recently is put together an album of all the text messages that are working. Well, I recently just had a look at the updated album with over 20 to 25 different conversations that have yielded very positive response and very positive conversations and tried to find a pattern. What is working? What are these women who are getting successful conversations with their exes doing to get those successful conversations? And without a doubt, the one consistency I found among all the conversations being started was curiosity hooks. But what is a curiosity hook? Well, simply put, it is something that you say or do to create enough mystery or curiosity to make your ex want to engage in a conversation with you. This is a huge problem I see happening for most of my clients. When they text their ex, they have gotten so used to the old habits of the relationship of just being simply able to start a conversation by saying, hey, or what's up? That doesn't really cut it after a breakup. You need to do something more to engage your ex to make sure that they're interested in even talking to you. That's where curiosity hooks come into play. Mistake number seven, going through this entire process without any kind of plan. Most people who are going to try to win an X pack are not going to follow any kind of plan. Now, just in general, when you are looking at things very logically, trying to win back an X is a difficult task. The odds are stacked against you. So in order to overcome or improve those odds, it stands to reason that you will need some kind of plan, right? But most people who I see simply read an article and are afraid to spend a little bit of money on just a simple game plan that they can follow. Most people are scared to take that step. And on the reverse side, most people who are very motivated and are willing to spend money and are willing to try end up buying all sorts of different game plans from all sorts of 
relationship gurus out there and they get information overload. They get too confused. They pick and choose different strategies from each one. They try different multiple strategies at once. The most important thing to remember here is even if it's not my strategies, even if it's someone else's, really what's gonna impact your chances the best is to pick one strategy and stick to it the entire way through. Hey, thanks for getting to the end of this video. Hopefully you guys aren't making those seven mistakes after your breakup, but if you are, I've got great news for you. The number one place you should start is first by figuring out if you even have a chance of getting your ex back. Luckily for you, I've put together a special quiz designed to answer that very question. All you have to do if you want to figure that out is simply go to the link below in the description and click on it. Or you can simply go to my website, www.exboyfriendrecovery.com. And of course, don't be afraid to leave a comment in the comment section below. I'm trying to respond to as many of you guys as possible to help you guys out and give you guys some clarity on what you should be doing. And finally, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Every subscriber matters to us. We're trying to produce high quality videos better than anyone out there. And that's only possible if you guys subscribe. So subscribe if you can and click that bell notification. I'll see you guys next time.